It's not just memorizing a pattern or memorizing a strategy. It's understanding how this game works. You have, if you're a trading challenge student, do you know how many webinars you've given? Uh, at least 30, right? I was gonna say actually it's 40 plus. Okay. So I was counting the other day. And it's if, been a while. I need to get back to those. Yes, but also if you're a trading challenge student, this is a thing. How do we get people to watch the archive webinars? Because they're like, something from a year or two or three years ago doesn't apply to this market. Why should they study the past? Um, I would say because I still trade a lot of the same patterns. So it's, it's not like, oh, I'm a totally different trader now. You're going to be looking at things that are outdated and I never use. Like, I, I still use most of my own setups. And I would also say even if it is a webinar on an outdated strategy, you still learn your history. It's like studying the Roman Empire, the Egyptian Empire. Like, you have to know your stock market history because what we want, want you to understand is that it's not just memorizing a pattern or memorizing a strategy. It's understanding how this game works. How is a short squeeze created? That's why we're talking about this. Not just, oh, what's the next stock that's gonna go from two to 60? Like, if you learn the ins and the outs of shorting and you learn the ins and the outs of promotion and stuff like that, then you can start to formulate, oh, here logically is how this is gonna play out. And then you might see, oh, this sector might start to get you know hot right now. Not because it's an amazing sector, an amazing stock, but just because these patterns play out. History plays out again and again, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? Like if you look at a lot of the top strategies, they're not new strategies, right? Like a lot of the patterns that you make money on right now, they're not brand new. It's not like, oh, I've seen a brand new pattern in 2019. No, like these short squeezes, they're, they might be more volatile than in the past, but we've seen short squeezes in the past. This isn't a totally new thing. It's just, you know, accentuated. Do you agree with that? Oh, completely, yeah. Yeah, we've seen some, I mean, the, the breakout pattern or like the big start of the squeeze usually looks pretty similar to yeah. anything I've seen before. It's just they're going further. Wait, I wanna pull up this one year thing. Give them a talk just for a second. When you first started with like, you know, your first year, how did you learn so much? Because I often say, thank God you didn't make any money for your first nine months. Thank you for that, yeah. because now it gives people like, oh, Gritani didn't make money for nine months, so I'm okay. But right. what were you doing, the, doing those during those nine months when you weren't making money? Okay, so I yeah, I got started in February 2011, uh, studying penny stock and silver. Yes. And for three months, it was just studying, no trading, and I was just trying to learn as much as I could. Um, I might have popped into another couple of chat rooms as well. I don't know. Like I was just I was looking everywhere. I wanted to learn patterns. I wanted to learn everything. I wanted to just always have something I could trade pretty much. Like I, every day I wanted to show up and be like, oh, I recognize this setup, I can make a trade. And I thought it would be really easy. I thought I'd make money really fast. I, I paper traded a little bit during that three months and I think I was, you know, a perfect 12 for 12 or something like that. <laughs> so I was, I was super confident. I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. And then I put real money on the line. I think I lost on my first three trades and uh, then it was just choppy. It was just choppy for a really long time. And the problem I eventually figured out was overtrading because I was trying to do it all. Like every single day I was showing up and I had to touch something. I had to, I had to try to play whatever was hot. I would see what people were talking about in a chat room and I would get excited about it and I would buy it. I would see what trade alert you put out, I would try to follow it. Never um, follow alerts! <laughs> from me, from him, from anybody. We share the alerts, we share stuff in real time so that you can learn in real time. What is my thought process? This is why I spend so much time writing out a paragraph of why I'm in a trade, as opposed to just buy this ticker, which is what a lot of chat rooms do. And I mean, I'm, I'm lucky I survived as long as I did like that, because I think it was until about August or September of 2011 that I was about break even and then started taking the hits where, you know, I, I was a $1,500 account back then. I think it started with a $300 loss on some overnight OTC pump that I thought was gonna gap up, you know, something I had no business being in in the first place. Yeah. And instead it gapped down, it was super illiquid, I couldn't get out. And uh, then that mentally messed me up. I got really freaked out because all of a sudden I'm down money. I start trying to short sell um, a pump and dump. I believe it was LBAS, I think. I don't oh, know if you remember that ticker. I do, yeah, I kept um, going. Yeah, it was like a dime to a dollar or something like that. And I kept thinking every day it was going to be the breakdown day. And so I would try to short it at like a dollar, it would go down two cents, then start to perk. I'd get scared, I'd cover it like 102 or 103. And I did this over and over and over and over again and just bled myself out. And so next thing you know, I don't have a $1,500 account anymore. 
Uh, and you know, during all this, I, I watched uh, Penny Stock and Pardue, I was watching video lessons, I was, I was really like making the effort to study and learn outside of market hours, but uh, I was just trying to do too much. And what turned me around was, you know, once I had that initial $1,500 gone, it was kind of like a wake up call that like, okay, what I'm doing isn't working, why isn't it working? And that's where, you know, I had to get really honest with myself, really get critical of what my process was like, what I was doing. And uh, the one upside of trying to do it all is that I had a lot of results to look at. So I could kind of figure out data. what was I, yeah, data. What was I doing well? What was I doing poorly? And it came down to the fact that what I was doing well was buying breakouts and buying new promotions. So that became the focus. And when I, you know, I, I worked the summer job at State Farm that year. I, so I had the money to refund, thank God. Did you wear khakis? Uh, I don't. Did think they I force you to wear khakis? Those no, there was, there was no, them. there was no khaki marketing okay, yet. Cool. Yeah, just curious. Um, but I, I kept on, you know, I, I started back up with another fifteen hundred, and I just told myself I'm going to stick to these two setups. And there were times where, you know, I would go two days, three days without making a trade, and that was really difficult, and that was very new to me because I just wanted action, and there were just were days the setup wasn't there, but. How did you stay disciplined? Because this is a problem with a lot of people. Sometimes there's no great play and they're like, their money is sitting. Again, their friends and family are telling them like you're wasting all this time studying. How did you remain on track? Did you have your friends and family? Were they supportive or were they like, you're, you're going crazy? Um, I mean, I don't really remember it being too extreme one way or the other, gotcha. to be honest. I, I think most people were just kind of indifferent. Fair um, enough. I, I was, you know, I was still away at college at this point, so. Um, but how did you personally have the fortitude to keep going because normally you put it, it was months. those early losses it was those early losses that did it because it, that really instilled a deep fear in me that i could fail because before you know going into it you know 12 for 12 on paper trades i thought no way i failed this it'll be the easiest thing in the world and then you know expectation meets reality and i go through those months of break even and then a total breakdown and falling apart and you know, I'm in a major I don't really like, and I'm already starting to think about how I do want to trade full time, but I'm no good at it yet. And so, you know, you, you take the losses and it really motivates you to change. Because well, what made you even like stick with it? Because most people have losses, they want to quit. Well, I, it helps that it was only $1,500 and that I wasn't trying to trade larger amounts of money because, you know... Well, whether it's 1500 or whatever, it's still demoralizing. Oh, it's demoralizing, yeah, but it's not like, you know, it, it's not like I was in debt or anything. Like, sure. you know, I, I made like $4,000 that summer at State Farm, so it's not even, it's not like I lost my summer salary even. Like, it was a very recoverable amount of money. But was there ever a moment where you're like, okay, I'm just losing, like, this isn't for me? Not there, no. Um, at that point in the career, it was like, I'm, I, I recognized that I was still new, and I felt like I had an idea of what needed to be fixed. Because you had the right mindset that this is a marathon. Exactly, yeah. Like, it, it's... It's not like I had those losses and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't figure out what I'm doing wrong. You don't quit running a marathon after like two miles. Yeah, so... David Goggins teaches you to go. Do you watch David Goggins? No. You should. You'll laugh. I'll show you some. Okay, videos. show me some, yeah. He keeps going and it's like, it's a marathon, right? And so right. you kept going. How did you turn around? You just focused on these two patterns? I just focused on those two for a while, yeah. And, you know, but again, it all came back to the fact that I was able to be honest with myself and critical of myself. I wasn't blaming somebody else. I wasn't saying, you're giving bad alerts. I wasn't saying, um, you know, oh, short sellers manipulated this play and that's why it didn't go up. Like, you know, I, I took responsibility. And that's one of the biggest things you have to do is you have to be honest with yourself about what can you change. And so I felt like I had an answer to that and that's why I didn't get discouraged. Have you read this book? The Intelligent Investor. I have not read this, no. Fantastic book if you want to learn about value investing. But just look, what year was it published? 1949. So this is the basically the Bible for value investors. It's called The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. It basically describes Warren Buffett's strategy to a T. Um, and a lot of people question, why am I, like, why, why do I care about a video lesson made six or seven years ago or a DVD made six or seven? This book is 60, 70 years old and the strategy is all defined. The cool thing is that this is not rocket science. What has happened in the past happens again. Maybe the stocks go up a little more, maybe with pumps, like they go up less. Like the, we haven't seen that many promotions. Right. But you're not taking on uh, something that's totally new. This isn't like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new invention 
recently new, right? But they trade like OTCs. Yeah, but any, anything <laughs> can happen. Anything can happen with Bitcoin. But what I'm saying with these stocks and these patterns, it's not new. It's just, you know, variations of old stuff. And that's why it's important to study the past. Because I don't think too many people have studied. I've actually looked at how many people have studied your video lessons and your webinars. It's not many. Because hmm. they don't think like, oh, something from four years ago doesn't apply. But it does. I want them to study your entire journey. I want you them to study my entire journey because there are parallels from four years ago to now. You know, and like shipping stocks were hot once upon a time. Shipping stocks will be hot again. Chinese stocks were hot. Low float stocks go get hot and hot again. Hey, Tim Sykes, millionaire mentor and trader. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope that they help you. I wanna share everything that I've learned over the years. You can check out more videos right over there and also click subscribe so that you can watch all of these videos, get that knowledge and become my next millionaire student.